It's one of the most powerful magnets in the world. Its magnetic force is so intense it can crush any object caught between them. But how are neodymium magnets made? We visited the largest rare earth deposit in the world in a magnet factory to discover how neodymium is extracted from nature and transformed into one of the most powerful magnets on the planet. Neodymium is a metallic element discovered by Austrian chemist Karl Auer von Welsbach in 1885, but its true potential wasn't revealed until the second half of the 20th century. Scientists developed a new type of rare earth magnet. They discovered that when combined with iron and boron, neodymium could form incredibly strong magnets, much stronger than conventional ferrite magnets, and lighter and more compact, ideal for miniaturizing devices. This breakthrough revolutionized the tech industry and led to essential components in electric motors, wind turbines, and electronic devices. To obtain neodymium, tons of rock are extracted from open pit mines in Bayan OBO, northern China, home to one of the largest rare earth deposits on Earth. Neodymium is carefully separated from these minerals, a key metal for making powerful magnets. This mine is one of the world's largest sources of neodymium. The minerals that contain it, like basnesite and monocyte, are embedded in rare earth oxide-rich formations. Large drills are used to bore deep, precise holes into the rock. Explosives are placed in the holes to fragment the rock. Once the explosives are in place, a controlled blast is carried out. This breaks the hard rock into smaller, more manageable pieces for extraction. After the blast, the fragmented rock is loaded into large haul trucks using excavators and mechanical shovels. These trucks transport the material from the blasting area to the processing plant. Once the rock arrives, a complex chemical treatment begins to isolate neodymium from other rare earth elements and impurities. At the plant, the rock is crushed into smaller particles to free the neodymium-containing minerals. Then it's separated and classified by size to ease chemical processing. The ore undergoes leaching, where it's mixed with acids like sulfuric acid. This dissolves the rare earth oxides, including neodymium, into a liquid solution containing their ions. This solution contains a mix of rare earth elements with very similar chemical properties. To separate them, a technique called solvent extraction is used. An organic solvent is added, which selectively extracts certain ions through multiple stages of contact and washing between the aqueous and organic phases. Each element is separated one by one. The neodymium is then precipitated as an insoluble compound, usually neodymium hydroxide. By adding a base like ammonium hydroxide, the precipitate forms and is then filtered and dried. The dry hydroxide is heated at high temperatures to turn it into neodymium oxide, a stable powder easier to handle for industrial use. The neodymium is now a fine gray metallic powder. It is carefully poured into 200-liter steel drums. A worker taps the edge of the drum to release residual powder stuck to the walls. As an extra safety step, a steel ring is tightened to seal the container. The drum is labeled with content, weight, and purity information. Then, the drums are sent to a specialized plant to produce super powerful rare earth magnets. The first step is creating a sand mold with the desired shape. A special tray is used to form four cavities for four magnets. The tray goes into a machine that fully covers it in sand. Once removed, the surface may be uneven due to machine pressure, so it's manually smooth for uniformity. The tray is placed back into the machine, which injects special gases that chemically harden the sand. The solidification process is fast, lasting only a few seconds. The result is a solid sand block with the precise imprint of the magnet design. This block is now a functional mold. Magnets come in many shapes and sizes, and so do the molds, each designed for the specific magnet being made. Now it's time to form the magnets. The next essential step is producing the alloy powder of neodymium, iron, and boron, the base of neodymium magnets. All materials are stored under inert gas to prevent oxidation, 
especially neodymium, which reacts easily with air. The three elements are placed into an electric induction furnace, around 30% neodymium, 2% boron, and the rest iron. The furnace creates a pulsing electromagnetic field that heats above 1,600 degrees Celsius, melting the metals evenly. To prevent neodymium from reacting with oxygen, the process is done in a vacuum. Once melted and homogeneous, the alloy is poured into sand molds. The molten alloy fills the cavity completely, reproducing every detail. The molds catch fire due to the flammable hardening gases in the sand. After pouring, the alloy is left to cool inside the mold. The burning molds are taken to another section and dumped on the floor. As the metal solidifies, it contracts slightly. That's why molds are designed with tolerances to compensate for shrinkage. Cooling must be controlled to avoid internal stress, cracks, or deformation. An external cooling system speeds up the process without compromising structural quality. Once fully solidified, the sand mold is broken to release the metal piece. This is a neodymium iron boron ring with the raw shape of the magnet, still uncoated and not yet magnetic. These rings undergo heat treatment to improve their internal structure and prepare for magnetization. They are placed inside a heat-resistant metal tube, filled with silica sand. The sand holds the rings in place and evenly distributes heat. Once full, both ends of the tube are sealed with refractory cement to block oxygen and protect the contents. The tube goes into an electric furnace, heating it to 900 to 1100 degrees Celsius until the rings glow red. This treatment improves the material's microstructure, releases internal stress, and prepares it for magnetic orientation. Although now solid and in final shape, the rings still aren't magnets. Next comes magnetic alignment. A strong, constant magnetic field is applied while they're still hot. This aligns the material's internal magnetic domains, tiny regions that determine magnetism direction. At this stage, the rings become slightly magnetic, but the key is that their structure is now aligned for final magnetization. Then, the tube is unsealed and the rings are carefully removed. They go into a machine that applies a magnetic pulse of up to three Teslas. This pulse locks in the magnetic domains, permanently turning the ring into a high-power neodymium magnet. At this point, the magnets are fully active, with extremely intense magnetic force. Workers must handle them with extreme care, as their pull can cause injury or damage electronic tools. Neodymium magnets are very prone to corrosion, especially from humidity. To protect them, a nickel coating is applied. Each batch is rigorously tested, and only those meeting quality standards are approved for packaging. The finished magnets are packed in protective boxes that isolate them from external magnetic fields and prevent accidents. Like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might find it interesting. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to keep learning.